Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, I've had this radio knocking around for quite a few months, and I thought it was about time to take it out of the box and give it a try. So let's quickly see what's in the box before we power it up, and then we'll give it a test on air. Now, first up is a user's manual, something that a true ham radio nerd would not even attempt at reading. However, it does cover all of the features and functions of the radio, and it's not written too bad. We then get the mounting bracket for those of you that want to fit it in a vehicle. We also get a bag of accessories, including a little protective pad to stop that bracket from scratching the radio. Now also included is a fairly standard power cord, the microphone, and of course the radio itself. Now with the radio unleashed from its protective packaging, we can see this is quite a beast of a radio with its large LCD taking up two thirds of the front of the radio. Now the included mic does feel a little cheap with no real weight to it, but we'll test the audio quality later in the video. Now the cable is terminated with an RJ45 plug and on top of the mic we find two buttons, up and down. Now these allow you to change channel if in memory mode or change frequency. Quite handy so you don't actually have to touch the radio, but in practice it's probably not that good when in VFO mode. Now overall, I think it's quite a nice looking radio, but that doesn't really mean that it's any good. So we'll cover some of the features and functions throughout this video. Now the QT60 is rated at 60 watts PEP on SSB, AM at 50 watts and also on FM. And that large heat sink that's located on the rear will help dissipate that heat when you're running at full power. Now you also notice on the rear just above that DC power socket is the USB socket. Now this is used for programming the QT60's memories with the appropriate software and programming cable. There's also two 3.5 millimeter sockets. Now one is for an extension speaker and the other is for a PA speaker, which is, you know, one of those public address speakers. Now that brings me back to the old CB days of putting a PA speaker under the bonnet of your car. Now the front panel hosts the radio's main controls with the on and off stroke volume control on the bottom left. Now above this is a double barreled encoder and this controls either the RF power output or the RF gain. Over on the right side of the screen at the top, we have another double barreled encoder and this one controls the squelch level and the other one is a clarifier which helps to tune in stations. Now the squelch level control, if it's turned fully anti-clockwise, it enables the auto squelch, so you don't need to worry about setting squelch levels. Below this on the bottom right, the larger encoder there. Now this is the main frequency and channel change control. Now I personally don't really like this. It's stepped and the clicks are really loud when you turn it. Now I think a smooth encoder would have been so much better, especially as this control acts as a VFO as well. When you're tuning around stations and you're on the fine setting, then the sound of those clicks is kind of annoying. Now under the large LCD, we do have a row of control buttons where you can change mode of modulation, enable or disable dual watch, enable or disable the Roger bleep. Yep, this radio has a Roger bleep. There's also a noise blanker, scan, memories, and emergency buttons, and they're also found on this row of buttons along the bottom. Now, as far as I can tell, this row of buttons are not backlit, which is a shame as I think it would have been quite a nice touch to have backlit buttons there underneath that screen. Okay, so let's plug in a mic and turn the power on. Now the display is okay. A large frequency display is nice with the mode of modulation just above it. Now the meters over on the left of the screen, which are kind of arced, shows the power output while transmitting along with SWR, which in my opinion is actually pretty useful. Now there doesn't appear to be any ALC meter, so I guess you have to adjust your mic gain accordingly. The receive signal meter is that top arced bar, ranging from zero to 60 dB, which is kind of standard on most radio transceivers. Germany, Germany, whiskey. Okay, and uh, my call sign is Oscar Hotel, 8 kilo, X-ray kilo. Uh, and uh, I'm here in the central part of the Finlandia. And uh, my name is uh, Tuomo, like a tango, a uniform, Oscar, Mexico, Oscar, over. My country is... Uh, 
Now the last clip I was changing the frequency using that bottom right encoder and you could hear those annoying clicks. Now to change the step size you just push that encoder in once and then you'll see one of the digits flash meaning this is the digit which will change when the encoder is turned. Now unfortunately it doesn't appear to remember this so after a few seconds it defaults back to the lowest digit which I find quite annoying. Now the menu is quite limited and this can be accessed by pressing the orange menu button. Now one of the options, which is quite useful, is the mic gain control. It allows you to adjust the audio level of the microphone so you can pretty much tailor it to your voice. Now there's also an option to enable a transmit noise reduction, which I guess could be used if you're in a noisy environment like a vehicle. And I guess this kind of feature would try and kill the road noise. Now there's also a receive noise reduction, which has a few different levels, but it's nothing like the DSP we find on top tier radios. So use at your discretion. This is M0 DQW, Mike Zero Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Testing the audio on the Radio Oddity QT60 on up the sideband on 10 meters. It's Mike Zero Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Testing audio, one, two, three, four, five. Testing audio, one, two, three, four, five. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, M0, DQW, over. This is M0, DQW, checking the audio on FM on the QT60. This is M0, DQW, just checking the audio quality on the Radio Oddity QT60. This is FM audio, talking around three to four inches away from the microphone. This is M0, DQW, testing. Yeah, so what's your Radio Whiskey 1 Alpha, Whiskey 1 America. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey, good afternoon, a 5-9. Yeah, you're also 5-9 coming into the UK this afternoon. Very strong and very, very loud. You've got a great system there. Uh, anyway, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. Uh, yes, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec Whiskey, QSL, thank you for new web 10 meters. Uh, good afternoon, have a good day, bye-bye. Yeah, okay, 7-3, bye-bye. Roger, Radio Whiskey 1 Alpha, Radio Whiskey 1 America. Now, all of the audio examples from the radio have been with the radio speaker facing the desk here. Now, let me just turn the radio on its side so you can hear the audio in a more natural clarity. Kilo Charlie One Fox Lima Yankee over to 8K XK. Okay, Peter. Uh, thanks, uh, five and uh, five uh, reporter from uh, New Hampshire. Okay, I'm uh, really pleased to copy you here. And all, all, of course, it's also in the first QSO on the this year. Our uh, last uh, last uh, QSO was in the last year. This is also first QSO on the this year. Hopefully, we have uh, many QSOs in the future in the in the uh, here and uh, also. To other bands. Uh, okay, Peter, but I not uh, keep any longer. Thanks, nice uh, short QSO. I wish you best 73. Now, I can't show you the programming software because I didn't get a programming cable, but what I can show you is what it looks like inside the case of this QT60 10 meter transceiver. Now, there's only four screws holding the bottom case on, but you will have to break the warranty seals either side of the radio to get inside. So here it is, and well, it kind of looks a bit sparse with a huge gap between that main PCB and the display PCB. However, that might be by design, or it may not. Regardless, it does look pretty well built to me. Now, if we zoom in on this section, we can see a little jumper and a white wire loop. Now, this is where you can modify this radio to work from 24 megahertz right up to 30 megahertz instead of that default factory standard of just the 10 meter band, i.e. 28 to 29 megahertz. So if I just snip this wire, move the jumper over one position, put the radio back together and then power on, we can now see that pressing the band button will cycle us through all sorts of bands, ranging from 24 megahertz up to 30 megahertz. Now you can of course use that rotary encoder to change frequency, and yet it's continuous all the way through the range. However, due to that annoying click and clunky steps, I think pressing the band button to quickly get to the band you want to use is much nicer. 
Now, I believe there are other models of this radio on the market, the same radio, but branded differently. Now, if you have one of these radios or any version of it, then let us know down in the comments what model you've got. And I'll be interested to know what you think of this radio. Now, personally, I would prefer other radios over this, but if you like the look of it, then it's up to you. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.